Good morning. <laughs> what is a Christian? Can you cut them through the middle and like uh, that sweet Brighton Rock or whatever it is? See it written always through the middle. And furthermore, what is a good Christian? Or in my case, I try to be a better one. Uh, I don't think necessarily there is such a thing as a good Christian. Certainly not perfect <clears throat> in one's lifetime. I believe one ought to aspire to be a better Christian. This film has been brought on by a friend of mine who can read his parents' Bible in ancient Greek, but he's gone Buddhist as far as we can work out, I think. But you never know. And in my experience, curiously, it's people who question and doubt and so on, who in fact may well come closer to the truth than those who accept blindly what they're told to believe and just sort of, you know, the Bible is that book in the corner gathering dust, quite frankly. Whereas someone with earnest endeavour within, who studies and questions and all the rest of it, may well say, well, you know, I'm not sure, am I a Christian? Possibly even, as it were, you know, the highest religious leaders in the world doubt their faith. I have been truly blessed over the last, well, in my lifetime. In fact, I can, if I look back at my life, I'm now 64 years old. I can feel God, hear God, not in terms of voices, but just looking at my life, calling me when I was perhaps 14 or 15 years old, and then life's intervened and along it goes and so on. But anyway, the point of that little ramble is that I have now been granted this faith, a rock solid Christian faith. I don't have to question anymore. Yes, I know the world's a mess. Yes, I know there's suffering left, right and center. Yes, I know all those things. And many of them would be perfectly legitimate reasons to question how does a loving God allow such things to happen? <clears throat> In particular to be little young babies, young people who are brought into this world and they suffer and die of natural causes or man-made disasters wars, etc. Where is the loving God? I cry. I do not have a straightforward answer to that. I've been given the answer by a, a nun, a sister. Their little souls go straight to heaven. Well, why bring them in in the first place? Anyway, that's a big issue in itself. What is a Christian? Well, in my experience, I've looked long and hard at becoming I suppose in this order, uh, a Benedictine monk through the Roman Catholics, which is not, in fact, my family background, or a priest in through the Church of England on the Protestant side of the fence, ultimately rejecting both of those purportedly Christian organizations of man. I will say, depending on the context, I don't wish to be gratuitously offensive to anyone, but you cannot be a practicing Roman Catholic and a Christian. Now, it's judge not lest ye be judged. 
I have this conversation on and off with a good friend, a lady, a married lady with uh, three children, in fact, almost grown up now, in Spain, um, who escaped her, her early youth of Roman Catholicism into an evangelical church for 10 years or so, and now has, has gone back to the Roman Catholics. And I, I simply won't keep repeating to her that. I see people, I was in Peru uh, two years ago now, South America, and there at the market at Puno by Lake Titicaca, at the market was a shrine with, with icons, Christian icons, and people would light a candle and pray, as it were, before shopping. But where do we see that in the West? This friend of mine challenges me, and yes, utterly, I <laughs> see, I come back to this, my England, I am British, more Londoner than anything, but you know, I have travelled and lived elsewhere and so on, but I am a Christian, that's what I say, I'm, my, my citizenship is British. And I feel rather like Elijah, as epitomized in one, the book of one Kings, uh, chapter 19, which I've just gone through again, where the prophets of his day were being killed, put to the sword by the sort of great and the good, because they were telling them how far and it would have been Jewish people, God's chosen people, the Israelites, how far they've strayed from God. And of course, they didn't want to be told, the great and the good, that they were behaving badly. <laughs> so I think it's one of the leader's wives had to <laughs> put to the sword and poor Earl of Elijah has escaped off and away he goes and says, Lord, look, I've had enough of this etc. And then eventually he hears this gentle whisper from God and then he anoints Elisha, who was the prophet after him. But essentially he felt utterly alone. Well, in my way too, by and large, I feel utterly alone. I can literally think of the people I would feel are truly Christian and and go through them and count them on the fingers of my hands. So I've rejected the big organized purportedly Christian churches. I will say this, <clears throat> depending on the circumstances, but it's what I believe. You cannot be, as it were, a signed up card bearing member of Roman Catholicism as it now exists in the here and now today, and a Christian. If you can't see the hypocrisy therein, then you have already become a part of it. You have to stand aside from that big organized church which tries to brainwash you and lock you in. The Church of England is a bit more wishy-washy, but I'm actually very fond of the Quakers. George Fox, the founder of the Quakers back in the 1600s, and his wonderful wife, oh, I'm forgetting her name, I think it's Molly, I, I may be wrong. Uh, their worship is silent, but, but they broke away it was after the Reformation, so that's Martin Luther, the dates 1517, the 31st of October, the castle wall at Wittenberg, the 95 Theses and all of that. Martin Luther railing against indulgences, which were, and are no doubt, uh, we'll forgive your sins, the priest will, church will forgive your sins, but give us the money. Yeah, well... 
My church service now consists of essentially a time virtually alone on a Sunday morning from 11 to 12. I pick the hymns I like, readings from the Bible, which I may read to myself, and I try and be in a, a place where I might meet others, or for that matter, in this my current abode, there's a little the, the one bedroom is my chapel. We might have a service there. There's a cross and a candle, and that's it. The Bible. Actually, a couple of King James Bibles, which are rather nice. But I just have the New International Version, a good modern translation. So it's ultimately up to God, who knows us all, the beauty of Christianity. And this is what despots and the like can't stand, as in China, Xi Jinping and all the rest of it, uh, an atheist society, I think one would describe it, or agnostic at the very least. Our human, each human being, to me, we are innately born with this capacity, the potential from conception when the sperm hits the egg, so no abortion, at the moment that divides into four cells, therein is God. And a baby, of course, has no um, intellectual concept of, of that. And then this is the question of being born again as an adult through the Holy Spirit. So that is the test, if you like, of someone who is a Christian, they have known the Holy Spirit. I have known the Holy Spirit. In my personal case, it's a relatively rare event. I don't go about the world um, constantly filled with the Holy Spirit. It's very powerful and very beautiful and probably makes one of it <laughs> impossible to get on with. Um, I'm generally at a much lower uh, level than that, but I still remain a Christian. Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one shall come to the Father but through me. That is what I know. It's in the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, of course, chapter 14, and then that's it. And it's because Christ says it, not because of any other reason. If Christ says it, it is true. God was, God is, God will be. He is the Alpha and the Omega. There is nothing else, ultimately. And then the problem, of course, with this line, if you like, the inescapable logic of it is that then means that all people of either no faith or other faiths, other than truly being a Christian, at the end times, will be thrown into the fiery furnace. Oh dear. <laughs> they do say that Christians are an awkward lot, or something like that, actually. They put it rather stronger than that. Yes. Well, Christ's teaching is, ultimately, it is a question of love, but it's not a wishy-washy love. It's a very hard, strong, powerful love.
The journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. Well, I'm very blessed. I have seen the light. I've heard God's word. I've seen and I have started out on that journey, but I remain very much a foot soldier. My eyes, I lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my salvation, which is Psalm uh, 121. So I have my eyes set on the hills, but in terms of my own personal self, I'm quite clear that I am just another foot soldier slogging away in the foothills, but also knowing in my very depths that there is God's promise and there will be eternal life when we are all joined up with our maker at the end. So that's at the end of our own lives. Of course, we will all die in due course. But also at the end times when Christ will come again. And by that reckoning, there are going to be precious few actual Christians around. You can cut through the middle and see, this one is a Christian. Ha! <laughs> so what is a Christian? Well, the first step is to open your heart to to, to God, to loving God through Christ, our guide, to me is primarily the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Acts, but of course the Old Testament too. That's what we have. And you can read a passage for years, decades, and then suddenly you see it, bang! see a deeper meaning, a deeper truth. And the, the essence to that is to keep on searching for that deeper meaning, that deeper truth. And that's a path anyone, it, it is available to every single human being in the whole world. Tragically to me, so many people are blinded through their own sort of materialism and their own lives and missing the whole point of life. The two commandments remain. Love God through Christ and then love your neighbour as yourself. Amen. Oh! No music today.